Good day and welcome to video number 21 in the video series Mastering the INCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the INCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. This video is about Information Management Process, Chapter 5-6 in the System Engineering Handbook. My name is Lance Sherry and I will be your tour guide for this video. So to put things in context, um, system engineering is a complex process of building complex systems in a complex life cycle. So we have the system engineering handbook to provide some guidance on how to do that. The system engineering handbook identifies 59 life cycle process and activities that are categorized into seven groups to provide some structured, systematic approach to the design, deployment, and operation of systems. This video is uh, um, about the information management process, and that's in the grouping, the category of technical management processes. Um, all of the uh, technical management processes talk about something called a project. The project is the way that we organize our thinking and our information and our structure for the purpose of creating or upgrading or retrofitting of systems. The project is executed and managed. The technical management processes are used to develop the project plans, to assess achievement and actual process against the project plans, and to manage and control project execution. So there are eight processes that you uh, can see on the right hand side. And we are, uh, this video is the third one from the bottom, the information management process. And just as we've said in previous videos, just to make the point, is project management and system engineering share a space. They have to collaborate with each other and interact with each other a great deal. Um, you can't do project management without system engineering, and you can't do system engineering without the project management. So the purpose of this video on information management process is to establish the purpose, uh, the outputs, inputs, and process activities. Um, and then we'll talk about the types of information, properties of the information, information sharing methods, and the information management plan. All right, let's jump right into it. The uh, definition, according to the System Engineering Handbook, of the information management process is to generate, obtain, confirm, transform, retain, retrieve, disseminate, and dispose of information to designated stakeholders. Quite a mouthful. Um, so we're going to take information and we're going to organize it and provide it to all of the stakeholders. The information management process plans, executes, and controls the provision of information to the designated uh, stakeholders. So in plain language, within the context of a uh, development process, there has a tremendous amount of information has to be communicated. And the information management plan uh, plans and manages the coordination of information throughout the project life cycle with all of the project stakeholders. So I, I would say that the information management is one of the most overlooked and yet most important element in a project, whether it's development or operation. If you take a step back and think about it, the way that large groups of people in, with different disciplines, in, located in different locations, possibly with different languages, the way that we can all work together and come up with a single product is a result of the, uh, of the transfer uh, and uh, communication of information. So, so that's why I say it's, 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 it's the most important um, element of any process, of any development process. And it's also the most overlooked because we just take it for granted. So information is valuable. It's kind of known as the new gold. And it's really critical to the why, the what, and the how things get done within a development program. Um, there is a lot of information that is communicated in the project, and this is kind of a very short list of all the information. Um, there's kind of two types of information. Proprietary information, that means that you want to protect it and not let the competition get it. And then there's non-proprietary information. 
So within the proprietary information, uh, you can think about the contracts um, that are let uh, to the subcontractors, uh, to the vendors, um, project planning documents to do with budget, schedule, scope, and baseline configurations, information from the stakeholders, which is critical to the design of the product, analysis reports that are done in, in the context of engineering decision making, uh, the requirements, the designs, the um, um, preliminary design review and the critical design review, the PDR and CDR outcomes. Um, so I'm not going to read through the whole list, but you can see for yourself just how much information is generated and needs to be communicated and stored and archived. Um, there's also non-proprietary information, press releases, user manuals, and other things that would be available to end users and, and the public. So, so all of this information has to be managed in a structured and, and clear way. And in order to do that, information has the following properties. Um, it has uh, priority or importance. Um, generally, based on the priority or importance, it also has uh, protection, uh, whether it's proprietary or not. Um, it'll have privilege in the sense that only some people may have access to a specific piece of information. All the information um, has a designation of the degree of security that it's uh, is is um, given to that information. And then you also have the communication in terms of timing and level of abstraction of the information. So that's a, a list of some of the, the properties of information, also known as the 3PSC. Uh, 3P, priority, protection, privilege, security, and communication. The um, information management process uh, takes all the information generated in the project, um, it processes it according to an information management plan and using an information management system and then um, curates the information with the 3PSC um, and in order to disseminate it appropriately across the project. So the two things in the middle, the information management plan uh, is the, the organization that describes how this information is going to be uh, disseminated and then the information management system more and more is becoming important, and that's the, the means and the mechanism for distributing the information. So, for example, one type of information management system might be some kind of social media system within the company. Uh, one example of that is Slack for communicating in an informal uh, process. And then, of course, there might be other sources of information or other types of information that are managed in a more structured, uh, formal way. Um, and, and configured and version controlled. So the information management plan um, defines the scope of information uh, that's maintained, resources for information management, the personnel and skills for information management, specific tasks for information management um, in terms of, for example, archiving uh, the information, storing the information, uh, establishing privilege for the information, uh, the rights and obligations and uh, commitments. Uh, some of those are, are legal uh, rights, obligations, and commitments that would be established in the information management plan. And then, of course, the information management tools, processes, and standards. And that could be everything from a very formal configuration management version control system all the way to the informal, as we mentioned, kind of a social media means of communication with emails and other things uh, uh, somewhere between them in the, in the spectrum. So information sharing methods. Um, you'd want to share information across departments in the same company, but also with uh, supply chain and with, with other vendors. And so here's kind of a, a running list of some, some of the ways of doing things. Uh, in the good old days, there was this thing called a memo, which would be typed up even with a typewriter um, and then distributed in paper form to employees or appropriate uh, staff. Uh, of course, that's now replaced with emails and there's texts and social media. Uh, videos are important. And then, of course, all of the technical information is going to be stored in some kind of formal way. Uh, through databases or documents and specifications. Um, meetings, verbal communication, very important, le legal documents, and of course the famous uh, press release. So those are kind of a, a laundry list of all the different ways that information is shared 
in a project. So uh, we're at the end of the video, and here's an opportunity for you to kind of test yourself and see uh, what you know. Um, this would be a good time to pause the video, grab a pencil and paper, and kind of jot down some answers uh, to these questions. And when you're ready, you can unpause and go to the next slide. Um, this slide has the answers to, to the questions. Uh, pause, uh, check your answers. And this is the final slide of the presentation uh, for the information management process. The next video is the measurement process, which we'll get to video number 22. So well, we want to thank you for your time. And uh, if it's possible, if you could give us a thumbs up, we'd much appreciate it.